I have a very interesting subject. I call it five simple steps to go from average to fortune. Let me give you this simple little talk, how to go from average to fortune. There's five simple steps. You might like to make a note of them. Here's the first one, get serious. That's number one. I don't know any substitute for that. You've really got to get serious. You don't have to be grim, but you must be serious. I know a guy that's got a half a dozen jokes keeping him from becoming wealthy. He's not known as rich. He's known as a joker, which I guess is okay if that's the kind of life you want to live. But it really isn't the best way to live. To go from average to fortune, you must get serious. And you must get serious about two very important things. Number one is setting your goals and where you want to go. Designing the next five, the next 10 years is so vitally important. What do you want to do economically? Where do you want to go? What do you want to be? What would you like to have? What would you like to share? How much would you like to earn? How far would you like to go? Those are some major questions to ask. And for that all to work out like you want it to for the next five or 10 years, in my personal opinion, you've got to get serious. Then you have to get serious about another important subject. And that important subject is called personal development. Personal development is striving hard to become the kind of person that you want to be. And to become the kind of person you want to be, you've got to work at it. 10 years from now, you will surely become someone. The big question is, who? What are you becoming? And if you go to work on it now, sure enough, in a very short period of time, you can take on a new direction to become the kind of person you want to be. There's a very important question to ask, and the question is, 10 years from now, you will surely arrive. And the question is, where? So to answer the question of where you want to arrive and the kind of person you want to be, you've got to get serious. So that's point number one. To make your life worthwhile and unique, to go from average to fortune, you've got to get serious. Serious. Life is serious. The future is serious. One ancient novelist said, these are the best of times and these are the worst of times. And for some of those who came across this platform at the extravaganza, million dollar a year incomes, for them, it's the best of times. But I want you to know that while they're getting the diamonds and the millions, there are a lot of people around the world, for them, it is the worst of times the best of times and the worst of times. That's called serious matter. How come such a difference from those who can reach such incredible heights and those who haven't yet found the answers for their life and their health and their future? We just have to ponder that and let that give us a note of seriousness. It's serious whether you win or lose. It's serious whether you succeed or fail. It's serious whether you've got a good future carved out for yourself or you do not have. These are serious matters. Matters of the heart are serious. Matters of income are serious. Matters of supporting your family, serious. Are you serious? Why? We got a serious matter here to discuss. We haven't come with the latest 10 stories. We've come with a serious matter. And I want you to take on that serious tone. Now, the second point is get smart. To make your life work out worthwhile, you've got to have some ideas, you've got to have the information. So you've got to be smart. In fact, in this decade, you must be much smarter than you were in the last decade. You've got to read the books, you've got to come up with the information. When I have a chance to talk to the high school kids, that's the theme of my talk, get smart. There's nothing worse than being stupid. And if you will read the books, learn from your experiences, do all the things that you possibly can to get the information, Sure enough, you'll be wiser this year than you were last year. And I've got a few techniques that I teach in my seminar on how to get smarter, keeping a journal, going to the lectures, going to the seminars, listening to the sermons, picking up ideas from other people. You just must keep up this steady process of learning. Never cease your quest for knowledge. And that's one of the key points to go from average to fortune. Get smart. This is called the possibility for life change starts with education. Don't be lazy in learning. Don't be lazy in picking up the ideas. Don't be lazy in learning from your own experience. Learning is the beginning of wealth. Learning is the beginning of life change. 
Some people want to start with motivation, but you don't start with motivation. Somebody says, just motivate this guy, he'll be all right. The answer is no, probably not. If a guy's an idiot, you motivate him, now you got a motivated idiot. So education, get smart, don't miss the training class. You say, well, I've already been to one of those classes. I've already heard it. I've got a good phrase for you to take home. That's no sign you got it. Just because you've listened to those millionaire tapes one time is no sign you've got it. I'm asking you to listen to them over and over and over. I'm asking you to dedicate yourself to a new level of learning. You know, study, learn, grow, change, develop. Never let it be said you didn't learn. Right? If you want to solve your problems, you got to learn. If you want to take advantage of an opportunity, you got to learn. Develop your own personal philosophy here. Philosophy, major determining factor in how your life works out. Each person's philosophy is like the set of the sail. The same wind blows on us all. The difference in where we arrive at the end of the week, at the end of the month, at the end of the year is not the wind that blows. But what's going to make the major difference? Each person's personal philosophy that sets a better sail, sets a better sail. So don't ask for a more favorable wind. That's like wishing something that's not going to occur. Don't ask for better seed and soil. All you got is what's available. Don't curse what you got. The key is to set a better sail and turn what you've got into the miracle of your, of your future. Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. And that's the reason for coming here, spending a couple of days of intense effort, taking notes, rolling up your sleeves, going to work, commit yourself to learning, so that you can get smarter for the days ahead. Now here's number three. You've got to get going. All of the things that you've learned will not do you that much good if you don't put it into an action plan. You've got to get going. In my management and leadership seminar, we teach game plans, how to put all the good things that you've learned into action economic action, social action, personal action, how to make the changes and how to actually do the work, how to actually function. Get going, that's the key. Some people are ever learning, but they don't put it into action. They don't really take the action. It's like the man who keeps bringing materials to the building site and never builds anything. He keeps bringing in the sand and the gravel and the windows and the doors and the roofing material, and he just stacks up all these supplies, but he never builds anything. See, if you do that long enough, fairly soon they'll come and take you away. You've got to do something with what you've learned. You've got to take action. You've got to get going. So that's one of the most important things to learn, how to design your days, how to design your weeks, how to design the months so that you take the proper action to get the proper return that you're looking for, whether it's economic or personal. Get going. It's a major key. You've got to get going. You've got to take action. The disciplines is the miracle process. And here's how to get the miracle of your future going as far as disciplines are concerned. Number one, do what you can. You might go home and set a whole new pace for yourself and we call it cleaning up neglect. Should walk around the block, could walk around the block for your good health, don't walk around the block. See, you're on the wrong track. Should read, could read, don't read on the wrong track. Should call, could call, don't call on the wrong track. Could change, should change, don't change. You're on the wrong track. Letters you haven't written, conversations you haven't had with your family, somebody you should sit down with when you get back home, get that job done. Don't let neglect destroy your days, destroy your life and destroy your future. Go back and do what you can. And if you'll do what you can, then life will give you some extraordinary things to do. We all pity the man, right? Wants to stride out of his house, go straighten out the corporation, has not yet straightened out his garage. You gotta take care of the small disciplines before life will give you a chance to handle the more complicated disciplines. Good phrase to take home. All disciplines affect each other. In fact, here's a good philosophical phrase. If you hadn't thought of it before, here it is. Everything affects everything else. It's so easy to be casual and say, well, this doesn't matter. This doesn't matter. I'm telling you, everything matters. Of course, some things matter more than others, but there isn't anything that doesn't matter. 
Let us not neglect. Do not neglect the smallest of disciplines and build on that foundation and you can have everything you could possibly want. Now here's number four. You must get excited. And not just the false enthusiasm of just pure positive thinking. You've got to get excited over some very basic things. One is get excited over your ability to make yourself do the necessary things. Because discipline is major step one toward personal progress. And anytime a person wishes to, they can make major changes in their life, personally and socially and financially. It doesn't ever have to be the same after today. No telling what you could do today if you really wish to. The act of murder is a clear indication that a person in one drastic act can forever change the course of their life. It just happens to be in the negative direction. What I would ask you to do, starting today, is get excited about committing an act. An act that's positive, an act that's constructive, to make the changes in your life that you want made, and to go the direction that you want to go. So that's number four, get excited. Get excited about your potential. Human capacity is usually never the problem. Little children can learn several languages. We can learn to do the most incredible things. All we need to do is take the time to do it. So it's not a matter of capacity. It's a matter of judgment. It's a matter of excitement. It's a matter of will. And it's a matter of wanting too bad enough. So it's pretty exciting to know that any day you wish, you can change your life. Any day you pick out, you can make major changes. It doesn't ever have to be the same again. And that's exciting knowing that intellectually and personally, you can actually do the things that will make major changes in your life. That's number four. Excitement that runs deep is the excitement that really lasts for a lifetime, not surface excitement. I'll tell you what's really gonna serve you well, and that's the excitement you feel inside that isn't even probably expressed on the outside, the excitement that runs deep. The excitement that stirs commitment, the excitement that stirs courage. Give me the chance and I will get the job done. That kind of excitement. Here's number five. Number five is get away. I have found, especially in the last 15, 20 years, that there's an important thing called life balance. You've got to learn to get away. You must learn to get away and be alone. Learn to get away and reflect. Learn to get away and learn how to live as well as how to earn. How sad it would be to learn how to earn well, but not learn how to live well. You must balance your life. We teach something, especially in my staff, I teach it some, something called lifestyle. Lifestyle is how you learn to live your life. Some people have money, but they don't even know how to spend it. They have time, but they don't know how to spend it. Some people are successful, but they don't know how to spend their success. They don't know what to do with it. They don't get joy from it. Rather, they get animosity. A father takes $5, crushes it, and throws it at his son and says, if you need it that bad, take it. Now, it's the same $5, but instead of dispensing it with joy, he dispenses it with animosity. That's the difference in not knowing how to live. It's called lifestyle. Then you've got to take time to cultivate good friends. You've got to take time to be with your family. You've got to take time to be with the people who are important to you, designing your life in those respects. Get away. Take the time. Reflect on your life. Recharge your batteries. Do some growing away from your enterprise. Then when you come back to your enterprise, after you have taken this time to balance your life, you will find that on the job, working on your enterprise, things will really go much better. So those are the five simple steps to go from average to fortune. Get serious. Get smart. Get going. Get excited. And get away. I hope those points will be valuable for you as you consider them. And I want to thank you for giving me this uh, few minutes of your time. And for you giving me some of your time, I would just like to sincerely share this with you. Do not walk in front of me. I may not follow. Do not walk behind me. 
I may not lead, but walk beside me and be my friend. Thank you for listening.